Hello, as you can see in this video, I'm going to be going over writing chemical formulas for ionic compounds. And let's go through and look at the three different cases that we have to be aware of. We have to be, be aware of if we have a binary ionic compound, that means that all of our elements come from group 1, 2, and 13 for our positively charged cations, or group 16, 15, 16, 17 for our negatively charged anions, which means that we aren't going to have any transition metals in that case. For the polyatomic ions, we have a polyatomic ion as our anion, then we have to make sure we know what the polyatomics are. And I wrote some of them down here, the common ones, carbonate, phosphate, sulfate, nit uh, excuse me, hydroxide, and nitrate. The charge, negative 2 for the uh, carbonate, for example, is the charge on the entire ionic unit. It's not the charge on one of the individual atoms. And you have to treat it as a single unit. Then the transition metals, you have a transition metal. You have to be able to identify the transition metals. And in the names, the charge on the transition metal is given by a Roman numeral, which is written after the name of the metal. Okay, so let's go through and do a couple. Before we do that, let's go through and make sure everybody has everything they need. The first thing I think you should have out is your periodic table. This is your periodic table. This is my periodic table, actually, and it has on one side metals, which form positive ions because they lose electrons, and the other side we have negative, we have nonmetals, which form negative ions because they gain electrons to fill their outer shell. And then I wrote down some of the com common charges um, for the, some of the groups. Group 1 is plus 1, group 2 is plus 2, group 13 is plus 3, and then for 15, 16, and 17, it's minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, whether they're gaining or losing electrons to fill their outer shells and get noble gas electron configuration, which is why they form bonds in the first place. The other thing you might want to have out is your ion periodic table. This is part of mine here. These are the common polyatomics with their names, their charges, and their chemical formulas. And then also in the middle of the periodic table here, we have our transition metals, which can form uh, different charges based on their uh, bonding conditions. And for example, manganese can be plus two or, or plus four. And we can see we here have the Roman numerals that tell us which one it is. Um, nickel can be two and three. Copper can be two and plus one. There's kind of some exceptions to that rule, which is zinc is plus two, silver is plus one. And you can see we go like this, plus, you can start aluminum, plus three, plus two, plus one. Kind of remember that rule. All right, so let's go through and see if we can name a few. All right, so we have sodium phosphide, and you can see in each of these we're going to do the same thing over and over again. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the charges so that we can use our crossover rule. So we look at sodium on our periodic table, and you'll notice that sodium has a plus one charge. So I just write that down right above sodium plus one. Phosphide, if I look at my periodic table, I can see that phosphide is going to be a minus 3 charge. So I write that down, minus 3, like that. And then I just write down the symbols and cross over the charges. So sodium is Na, and I put 3. The 3 comes from the phosphide. And in this case, I have phosphide, and I put Phi for phosphorus, and I put a 1, but I don't put the 1 down because we don't write the 1s in the chemical formulas. So it's Na3P, just like that. All right, so that's the chemical formula for uh, that element. Remember, these are the binary compounds, so we're just writing down the charges on the, on the elements. The magnesium has a charge of plus 2. It's a group 2 element. Chlorine has a charge of minus 1. It's a um, group 17 element. So I'm going to put down Mg for magnesium and chlorine. I can take the 1 from the chlorine and put on the magnesium. You don't write that. Take the 2 from the magnesium and put it on the chlorine like that. Okay. Let's do one more of these binaries. This is plus 3 for aluminum. This is minus 2 for oxygen, which is the oxide. And I put down A, L, 2. The 2 comes from the oxygen. O, 3. The 3 comes from the aluminum. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm applying the crossover rule. I take the charge number, put it on the uh, uh, oxygen, take the charge number, the oxygen and put on the aluminum like that. All right? Do the same thing over and over each time. Okay, I'm going to erase those. I'm going to go on to the next slide. And this one, you can see now, you have to be able to recognize these are the polyatomic ions, sulfates, hydroxides, phosphates. Most of them end in eights or ites, but I'm just going to do the very same thing again. I'm going to put calcium is plus 2. I'm going to look up here, although I have it memorized, and maybe you should have some of these memorized. You look on your table, calcium sulfate. I just put down calcium, and I put SO3. 
four. Now you'll notice this is a two and a two. If the numbers are the same, the two and the two, the absolute value, the numbers are the same, then you know it's going to reduce to a simple ratio of one to one. I don't put Ca2SO4 two because these are ionics. It reduces to one to one. So now we have magnesium, and magnesium is a plus two. Hydroxide, oops, I don't need to write that down. Um, hydroxide is minus one. So I'm going to take Mg. I have one of those. Now I know I have two hydroxides. So I'm going to put parentheses. I have to put that whole unit is the polyatomic ion, is the anion. So it's MgOH2 like that. Okay? You have to use parentheses if you have more than one polyatomic ion in your unit. Okay, now we have plus three, excuse me, plus two for barium. And phosphate, I believe, is minus three. So I just put down barium, B, A. And I'm going to put down, I know I'm, oh, I'm going to, have to put that three here. I know I'm going to have two phosphates, so I open my parentheses, P, O, 4, and then I'm going to put the two right there. So that's B, A, 3, P, O, 4, 2. And it means that there's three bariums and two phosphates, and each phosphate is a P, O, 4. All right, that's polyatomic ions. And again, you need to be able to kind of recognize when you have a polyatomic ion. This is not sulfide. This is not phosphide. Okay, this is a sulfate and a phosphate, and this is the chemical formula for those polyatomic ions. Okay, let's erase that. Let's go on to the last one. Now we have our transition metals, and as we said earlier, the Roman numeral in front of the metal tells you the charge on the metal. All right, so all I'm going to do is the same thing again. I'm going to put down, oopsie daisy, I'm going to put down that lead is... The lead is plus 2, so I write down here plus 2. Sulfide is minus 2. I looked that up in my periodic table, and I know that the chemical formula is P, B, S, just like that. Again, I have 2 and a 2, and therefore it reduces to a 1 to 1 ratio of P, B, S, one of each. Okay, nickel is plus 3. Carbonate is minus 2. I looked that up on my chart. I can tell that nickel is plus 3 because it's Roman numeral 3. And now I'm going to put down that this is nickel, 2, that's Ni, 2, and this is carbonate, which is CO3, and I have to put parentheses around the carbonate because I know I'm going to have three carbonates in that ionic unit, and so it's Ni2CO3. Okay, iron once again. I know I have iron is a transition metal. I know that because I can look at my periodic table. I also know in the name I have this Roman numeral, and I'm going to put down iron is plus 3. Hydroxide is, whoops, I don't need to write that down yet. Hydroxide is minus 1, and then I'm going to do the crossover rule. So it's Fe, and it's only one Fe, so I don't put the 1 down, but I know I'm going to have three hydroxides. So I put down this, and I open my parentheses, and put a 3 like that. All right? So you can see I basically did the same thing for all three of those instances. I wrote down the charge. I wrote down the symbols, and I crossed over the numbers for the crossover rule. Okay, it's the same thing over and over again. Of course, there's three different instances, and they're a little bit different, and you have to just kind of be able to recognize those differences in the names. Erase this. Okay, that's the end. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, leave your comments in the comment section below. Also, let me know where you're watching. I'm always interested. I am in Bozeman, Montana. Thank you very much.